Hello everyone and welcome back to Ace Attorney Dual Destinies. We're trying to figure out what this guy's deal is. Get into his his emotions. What what? True killer inside fired a gun at me. So sad. Surprised. Angry. I had to avoid getting shot. But when I tried to get another look, they had vanished into thin air, but there's nothing. That's weird that everything just stopped. I was near the elevator side door. No. Why is he sad there? And the control room door should have been shut tight to the killer. Hold on. All right. So, I mean, I guess no one would be happy about having a gun fired at them, but that does seem, sadness seems out of place there. Surprise and anger, not so much. I hid to avoid getting shot. Same thing, same, like same energy. That's weird. But this on its own? Near the elevator side door and, well, the launch pad one door. Okay, that matches up. Why would he be sad about that, though? Got it. Try it. Correct me if I'm wrong, but you seem to be afraid of the launch pad door. No, he seemed sad. What? The great Yuri Cosmos, afraid? And, and what basis do you have for that outlandish accusation? Whether I have any basis or not, you seem quite distressed by it. I most certainly do not. Director Cosmos, there's something about the launchpad door you're not telling us, isn't there? Ugh. Ah. Wow, he's speechless. It looks like you hit the nail on the head, boss. Ugh. It's working, boss. One more punch and it'll be a knockout. There seems to be one more emotion that's at odds with this testimony. Go get him! Okay, back in the Matrix it is. Time to pinpoint our way to victory. Okay. Try to enter the lounge. Nothing. Okay. So that- none of that is new. But when I tried to get another look, they had vanished into thin air. There's near the elevator side door. Okay, so we established that already. That didn't clear anything up. And the control room door should have been shut tight. Hmm. Hold on. There was... Where was it? Killer... Okay. So none of that was odd before. None of that is new, though. So there are two things that jump out at me. One, a lack of surprise here. But probably even more surprising is the lack of surprise that they had vanished into thin air. Combined with the sadness at the launch pad one door. Why was he not surprised? Why, like, I guess, maybe not. Because this one, I could make the same argument for this one. Although I feel like this one is probably stronger. Let's just do it. You must have thought it was very strange that the killer vanished into thin air. Yeah. I did. That kind of thing just doesn't happen, usually. And yet at the time, you barely registered any shock at the occurrence. I was right. What? Why are you... Ugh. I can only think of one reason as to why you weren't surprised by the killer's vanishing act. You must have had a good idea of where they went. Isn't that right? 
What? No, of course not. That's preposterous. Only I can enter the control room. And the area beyond the launch pad door was filled with smoke, making it impassable. And as for the southern door... I was standing right there. So there was nowhere for the killer to run to. Maybe, or maybe not. You went into the room to check on Mr. Starbuck and Mr. Terrain, yes? What if the culprit took that opportunity to silently slip out through the southern door? I highly doubt it, as you recall, right after I entered the lounge. Detective Arm came rushing towards it herself via the southern hallway. Anyone trying to escape through there would have been caught by her. Yet the director wasn't surprised the killer vanished. So you're absolutely sure there was no escape route for the culprit to use. Hmm. I'll just input those two pieces of data and... Yes! Just what I wanted to see. Alright. That didn't quite do what I thought it would. Presto change less discord. Looks like we're on the right track. Thanks, Athena. Now to make sense of what we've learned. Director Cosmos wasn't surprised that the culprit suddenly vanished from the lounge, which points to the possibility that he knew where the killer had escaped to. Furthermore, talking about the door to the launch pad made him uneasy. In other words, he's probably hiding something about the launch pad one door. Okay. When we put those two pieces together, only one solution to this puzzle comes to mind. Director Cosmos, did the real killer escape through here? Through this way. Although that would kind of... That would kind of be surprising in and of itself that they would go that way after a bomb went off. That's gotta be it. The culprit went through the launch pad one door to escape, didn't they? Yes. I mean, no. Disaster starboard. We're going to crash into an asteroid. Master technician, you are not. But the area beyond the door was filled with smoke, wasn't it? True, but this is still the only logical answer there is. If we can just figure out what the director is hiding about launch pad one door. We should be able to iron out the logical inconsistencies. Uh, uh, but that door requires fingerprint recognition. Only Starbuck, Terrain, and I have access. I don't see how the killer could have opened that security lock to you. That's an easy one. The killer was right there in the boarding lounge, meaning there's a way he could have easily gotten past that security lock. Come to think of it, we did examine the prints on the fingerprint recognition device. I propose that the killer used this person's fingerprints to get past security lock. Well, only one person's prints were on that. Take that. Ugh, that's... Mr. Starbuck was lying unconscious there in the boarding lounge. Anybody could have easily gotten past the security lock by using Mr. Starbuck's prints. And actually, Mr. Starbuck's prints are exactly what we found on the device's screen. Ugh. Looks like he does have something to hide about the launch pad one door, and I'm betting it's got something to do with the culprit's escape route. But I don't have enough information to see the whole picture yet. Uh, recess? Do you know something just occurred to me? Would you like to hear it? Huh? Uh, oh yes, by all means. There's a security camera in boarding lounge one. R right, the one that recorded the victim and the defendant. What about it, Your Honor? If the true culprit escaped into that launch pad one corridor, that might be recorded in the security footage as well. Then the mystery would be solved. What do you think of my logic? <laughs> I hope you don't strain your faculties too much for that, Your Honor. I beg your pardon? Look, if we play the security footage beyond this point... Nothing. That's- wait, that's relevant. Oh my, the footage got its off. The camera was running on backup power, but apparently the power cables were damaged. Most likely by the after effects of the explosion. There's no footage after this, be it of criminals or space aliens. Mm, I thought it was such a good idea, too. <laughs> Just because your grandchild is watching from the gallery, it doesn't mean you should try to show off too much. Grandpa Baldness. The prosecutor Blacklow, how did you know about my grandchild? I think his grandchild just learned a little about the harshness of the adult world. Anyway, setting aside the issue of grandchildren, I'd like to have the witness continue. Director Cosmos, could you tell us more about when you entered the lounge? Mm, uh, if I must. I hit you avoid getting shot, that makes sense. 
After the killer vanished, I went into the lounge. Okay. But that's when Detective Arm appeared from the elevator side door. Okay. And then the detective shot at me. Okay. So you see, the killer could have only escaped the launch pad, right? Oop, I didn't mean to do that. What do you think about Dr. Cosmos' emotional response, Athena? Actually, my cat is really sick, you know. What? Oh, very sorry to hear that. And on top of that, my dog just doesn't seem to want to play with me. Um, why are you telling me all this now? Just humor me, okay? Now, when you heard about my cat, and then about my dog, which story made you feel sadder? A story about your cat, of course. It's only natural. Exactly, that would be the natural reaction. But there's nothing natural about the director's reactions. Think how indiv each individual reaction changes across the whole testimony will be key. Sounds unnaturally complicated, but that somehow doesn't surprise me. Okay. Okay, that makes sense. And then the detective shot at me, still surprised. I wonder if that's what they're getting at. Okay, so that, that statement's useless. Um, I went into the lounge. I get it. Oh, because I'm like, but he's still surprised them both. Okay. So she runs through the door and he is like super shocked, right? But he gets shot at and he's only a little bit. Oh, I hope that's it. it. Director Cosmos, why were you so surprised when Detective Arm found you and again when she fired? Isn't that a bit unnatural? Sadly, even great men such as myself have ordinary human feelings. Our bodies are bound by the forces of gravity and emotions. Even a great man such as myself experiences surprise on occasion. Um, yes, I'm sure you do. But my real point is not the fact that you were surprised, but rather what you were surprised by. Uh, pardon me. Yeah. First you were surprised when Detective Arm found you in the lounge. And then just after that, you were, of course, again surprised when she shot at you. But considering what you were surprised about, a strange phenomenon occurs here. Director Cosmos, what is strange about your surprised reaction is the fact that you were... More surprised when Arm came... That's... Ooh. Sure, you were surprised when Detective Arm shot at you. But the surprise you felt when she found you in the lounge was much greater. That was actually a really, really good hint as to what you needed to be looking for. The fact that you were more surprised by simply being found than be by being shot at suggests to me that you were conflicted about whatever it was you were doing there. The enemy has acquired a new weapon. Commence operation. Hide under your desk. I'm on it. Ah! Please tell me I finally sunk his battleship. No. Boss, I'm getting less discord now. That must mean he really is hiding something about that launch pad door. Whatever he's hiding most likely has something to do with the killer's escape. I wonder what it could be. If he's doing something suspicious around that door, maybe we can spot some change between before he came to the room and after. Detective Fulbright gave us a photo taken after the crime scene. Let's run a comparison. Let's see, this footage is of the door before Director Cosmos arrived. And this is how the door looked after the director entered the lounge. Hey, look at that. There is a change. Something's definitely different. Director Cosmos. What is it? What have you two been up to over there? Finding the answer to what you were doing when Detective Arm found you, that's what. And that answer lies clearly in this footage. All we have to do is compare it to the photo that was taken during the investigation. Don't be ridiculous. If you really do have an answer, you'd have pointed it out already. 
He's asking for it. This is what changed directly after the incident. They couldn't put the picture side by side, huh? Um, where's that picture? It's really hard to tell in the, the dark photo. But it looks like this has glass over it. In the second photo, but not in this one. It's, man, that is really hard to tell. Take that. The answer is this knob. Ugh, that's... Your Honor, please take a look at this footage. I was right. Mm, let's see. Take a look at the knob next to the launch pad door. As you can see, it's horizontal. Oh. <laughs> Whoops. I don't know how I missed that. I'm like, I think there's glass over it. And then... No. Uh. <laughs> anyway, as I was saying, clearly... Uh, where, where is it? Yep. Clear, clearly, that's been twisted. Yeah. That's what, that's what I said. <laughs> There's glass in one. <laughs> However, when we investigated the scene of the crime yesterday, the knob was vertical. <laughs> okay. Out of all the ridiculously stupid luck I have had over this, like, all of these games, that might be the winner. <clears throat> what does that mean? It means that sometime between before the director arrived and after, someone turned this knob. What does it do, though? I thought it was a, like, break glass. Well, I guess we would have found broken glass, but... That's what I thought. After the scene was discovered, you were the only one who could have turned the knob. Come on now, Director Cosmos. Let's hear what you have to say. What were you trying to do by turning that the knob on... That knob by the door? Ugh! Fine, I admit it. You're right, I did turn that knob. That knob is a safety lock meant to keep the launch pad in place. I was afraid there would be more explosions, so I wanted to move the launch pad away. Alright, uh, you wanted to do what? That's right, it, it moves. We learned that, and I was like, Hey, didn't Panko tell us something about how they prepare for launch? She said that once the launch pad's fully assembled, it's moved to the launch site. Yep. But the safety lock in the boarding lounge has to be disengaged first, and only he can do that. I guess that clears up what that knob is for. Oh, so if the killer escaped into that launch pad one corridor... Maybe they were transported along with the launch pad to the launch site. I don't think so. The launch pad one corridor was filled with smoke. I don't think they could have escaped through that corridor. So then where did the killer escape to? Hmm... I guess there are still some things we have to uncover. Director Cosmos, I request that you tell us about moving the launch pad in more detail. Fine, uh, but listen carefully, for I'm about to give history-making testimony. Oh, here we go. I had no choice but to disengage the safety lock. Okay. I feared there might be more explosions. Okay. So I had to cut the launch pad loose. The killer had was through the one. Why was he angry about that? That's not the weirdest one I've seen so far, though. But that area was a sea of smoke. Confound it. Where on earth could they have gone? Okay, so angry. Surely the only escape the killer had was through the launch pad. That one I can kind of justify. What caught my attention immediately. Why is he happy about that? I don't like to go with, like, the first thing I see all the time, but yeah. I had no choice but to disengage a safety lock. You make it sound like you were reluctant to do so, and yet when you did it, you felt some joy as if you were very pleased with yourself. <clears throat> Was he an accomplice then? 
How do you do it? How do you know everything as if you were there? Pretty impressive, isn't it? This is the power of analytical psychology. So care to explain why you felt joy when you disengaged the safety lock? When I think back on the facts we've discovered up to this point, I have to believe that you were trying to fulfill some hidden agenda. Ugh, how do you know about that, too? Ooh, we got him. Because I'm more or less a pro. Eh, guessing. <laughs> But you have no proof that I had a hidden agenda, and even if I did, I would never ever tell you, so there. I they say people regress as they grow older, but you, sir, take the cake. How could you doubt a man with such a great intensity, intelligence, and integrity? Science. You, a man of integrity? Don't make me laugh. Prosecutor Blackwell? What came over him all of a sudden? You spotted nothing but falsity since you stepped up to the stand. You're not the kind of man that will be glorified in the annals of history. Not for greatness, anyway. Unless you consider greatest barefaced liar an honor. L -l 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 liar His words bite harder than his blade. You moved Launchpad 1 after the explosion. You might know how naive you are. So it would have been moved for the launch, right? You fail to realize how even the facts themselves have betrayed you. Yeah, they would have gotten on and then it would have been moved, so he brought it back. No, he couldn't have. You know, just a thought, but modern English can be your friend. And here's a thought for you immediately following the bombing. Launchpad 1 was on the boarding lounge side. The police confirmed this on the scene. What? Liar! So that means the director didn't move the launch pad? No, he did. Curse my judgment for calling history's greatest liar to the witness stand. Let us leave him to indulge in his lies and war games to his heart's content. D -d liar! But it doesn't make sense. You can't deny that someone turned that knob. And once the safety lock was released, I'm sure the pad must have went somewhere. If we chase down the truth of this issue, we just might find where the killer escaped to. Ah! You're sure it must have went somewhere. We just might find out. Your arguments are nothing but conjecture, bluffing, and wishful thinking. Stop chasing your fantasies and see reality for what it really is. Or are you not mad enough to, boy? Ah! <laughs> Talk about hitting below the belt. Hands these days. I don't understand it. I'm sure Director Cosmos must have moved the launch pad. The knob was definitely turned after he came to the lounge. But the launch pad is right where it's supposed to be. Ugh. Come on. Wait a minute. Maybe I have it all backwards. There you go. What if the director turned the knob not to move the launch pad away, but to bring it back to where it was supposed to be? What are you blathering about? What if the launch pad was at the launch site before the incident? And then after the incident... Director Cosmos moved it back to its usual spot. All he had to do was turn the knob to call the launch pad back. And it would be right where the police found it. L <laughs> he made him sigh like Mr. Starbuck. Was what I said really that off base? It pains me to have to explain how wrong your own logic is to you, however. Our great liar turned the knob only after he discovered the crime scene. So he claims. Indeed, the pad existed beyond the lounge when our Astro Wanders made their escape. A fact that has been recorded for posterity and. Oh, yeah. Filmless film. Alright. So to reiterate. Stop chasing your fantasies and see reality for what it really is, boy. Uh, no, there's something here. Get a grip, Mr. Wright, and focus. We know the launch pad must have been moved, but our deductions and actual facts of this case are in direct contradiction to each other. Well, maybe the two astronauts never actually boarded the rocket. This footage could be fake, taken with body doubles after the incident or something. No, oh, no, I think I have it. On second thought... That's too far-fetched even for me. They were never... That's why. They were never... They never made it to the rocket. 
Never actually boarded the rocket. Hey, wait a minute. Maybe, just maybe. Huh? I got this. Prosecutor Blackwell, what if I told you the two astronauts never set foot inside the launch pad area, but instead went into another place? Yes! And what if when the director moved the launch pad one back, it was not from the launch site, but from another place? What would you say then? Cut the existential bull or I'll cut you. No, no, no. <clears throat> Mr. Wright, you explain yourself at once. I know I'm right. It was all the other way around from the beginning. Very well, Your Honor. Let me explain. Director Cosmos's reason for moving Launchpad 1 was to switch it with another place. There we go. I got this. Because he wanted to switch it with some other place. I'm sorry, but uh, did you say switch it? But what could he possibly have switched the Launchpad with? The other, the other side. Oh, you'd be surprised, Your Honor. All it takes is a little thinking outside the box, and the answer becomes clear as day. This is what was switched with the launch pad one. Yeah, I mean, it has to be that. The launch pad one was switched with the Space Museum. In the past, the Space Museum used to be launch pad two. It has all the same features as launch pad one and can even be moved to the launch site, meaning the Space Museum and launch pad one can also be switched with each other. You can't mean. The rocket the astronauts boarded was not the one in Launch Pad 1. It was the one in the Space Museum. What? Balderdash. And yet, it's the only explanation that accounts for every riddle and inconsistency. This is how Space Center w the Space Center was just before the incident. I see Launch Pad 1 the Space Museum have already switched places. That's right. And with the two switched like this, the astronauts entered the Space Museum from Boarding Lounge 1. That allowed the true killer to enter Launch Pad 1 from Building Lounge 2. And set the bomb on the rocket. Come to think about the door to the Space Museum from Boarding Lounge 2. Welcome, welcome. The Space Museum is open to the public every day of the year from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. Okay. Exactly. Anyone could pass through the door to the Space Museum. There are no fingerprint recognition system on that door. In other words, with the two launch pads switched like that, someone other than Mr. Starbuck could have easily planted that bomb. <sighs> After setting the bomb on the rocket, the culprit snuck into the boarding lounge one and waited there, concealed, in order to kill Mr. Terrain when the two astronauts emerged from the Space Museum. But we're still not close to a motive or any of that stuff. Recall that Mr. Miss Blackwell, Mr. Starbuck, and the director all saw a suspicious figure, who we can suppose after the, after killing Mr. Terrain, made their escape into the space museum. After that, Director Cosmos switched the two launch pads back, without realizing the killer was inside the space museum. Killer then left the space museum and made a clean getaway. Ugh. Right, Dono. I see you know how to handle a sword and handle it well. Perhaps I should call your sword master bluff. I'm a seasoned warrior who has to cut down many a prosecutor. But unless you can prove your theory, it's no better than a rusty sword. That's alright, you have no proof. I switched the launch pads. Somebody needs a better anger management counselor. If the launch pads really were switched, there might be a record of it somewhere. At this point, launch pad 1 and the Space Museum are switched with each other. So the, so the corridor beyond the door should be the one that belongs to the Space Museum. Let's see, this is an image of the launch pad 1 corridor. Do you see anything different when we compare it to the security footage? Huh? The number on the floor. <sighs> well, what do you know? It looks like we have proof after all, Prosecutor Blackwell. And if this is just another bluff. Oh, don't worry. It's all right here. I see it. Right in the footage. Prove that beyond this door is the corridor to the Space Museum. Very well then, answer this for me if you would. What is in this footage proves the corridor belongs to the Space Museum. Can you, I, I it's hard to, like, get at. There's a one on the floor of the Launchpad 1 corridor. 
but take a look at the floor of the corridor in the security footage. Do you see the number on the floor behind the astronauts? It doesn't look like a one, does it? That's because what you see is actually part of a two. What? Why is it a two and not a one? That's because the corridor you see is the one to the space museum. And so that means the corridor in this footage was not filled with smoke. That's right, because the explosion didn't occur in the Space Museum. The explosion occurred in Launch Pad 1 on the opposite side of the Space Museum. And now that we know that the two astronauts escaped from the Space Museum, the mystery from the previous trial of how they got down the ladder is cleared up. That's right. Mr. Train carrying Mr. Starbucks simply took the elevator from the upper level down to the middle level. It's just incredible. The two launch pads were actually switched. But you'd think someone would have noticed an event of this magnitude. Everyone was down in the basement shelter when the launch pads were swapped back. There's no way anybody could have known what was happening on the surface. So why did he hide it, though? There we go. Got him. It's end of the week. We'll do we'll do a slightly longer episode. I'd like to get to like a save point if we if we can. No more lies, Director Cosmos. It's high time you told us the truth. Never mind. If there if there's another testimony, we might call it here. My honor, my glory, everything is slipping away. Time to deploy my ultimate weapon, Galactic Engine Ignition. Ooh, what? It's gone haywire. Ah, won't st stop. Uh, where do we? My stars, my glory. Uh, uh, what? What? What is happening? No, not this way. Ah, uh, what? Did you barely find your seat and after that witness? No. Is this our? Mm, I see we managed to retrieve you before you came to any bodily harm. Dr. Cosmos, do you admit you switched the launch pads? Mm, I admit it's true. I switched launch pad one for the space museum. Uh, it's good to hear words I can believe for a change. Before you do, Your Honor, two things. First, we don't know if Mr. Terrain had prior knowledge of the switch. As for Mr. Starbuck, he wasn't aware of his surroundings thanks to his medication. Either way, Mr. Terrain would have realized the instant he stepped into the Space Museum that it had been switched with Launch Pad 1. So my first question is, if the Space Museum was perfectly fine, why did Mr. Terrain feel the need to put on such a dramatic display? Oh yeah. As for my second question... I'd like Director Cosmos to tell us why he switched the two launch pads to begin with. Mm, please, I can't. I, I exercise my right to remain silent. But I will say my hands were tied. I was only doing what I could to keep my men from getting caught in that blast. Ugh. The Director is terrified. He must have, have one heck of a reason for not wanting to explain why. Probably not a good time to try to Pry it out of him, huh? Excuse me, but would you mind if I picked up my stars? Without my badge of rank, I'm nothing. Mm, I don't see why not. Bailiff, help the director retrieve his stars. Wait, what? I don't like this. Mm, it appears the possibility of a culprit other than defendant has presented itself. Okay, cool. Mm, Mr. Starbucks, is there anything you wish to say? I don't get it. You don't get it? What, what don't you get? Director, why did you do all that? From the very beginning, you never meant for the launch to go ahead, did you? You you tricked us. Mr. Starbuck. Mr. Starbuck, my boy, I'm sorry. I can't tell you the reason why. But I had to do it to protect the Space Center. Director, will I, will I ever get the chance to go into space again? Yes, yes, of course. I won't rest until it happens. And I will get you into space again, my boy. Then the dream is still alive.
All right, we. Silence. Wait, no, I wanna. Uh, we can we get on to the next part of the investigation? Hmm. You're not going into space, Starbuck. But prison, I won't have it any other way. Why are you so hung up on him? Yes, I accept that the launch pads really were switched. If there were a third person at the scene, I suppose they could have escaped. But I have yet to see proof of this third person's escape via the space museum. Ooh, that's a good point. Ugh, he's right. I don't have any proof. Can I go get some? Starbuck, you will spill everything you know. What? Me? Ugh. Where did you get those bombs? Tell me now. If you don't, my blade shall feast on your blood. Gah. I'm going to die. I want to die in space. I have to do something. Solomon Starbuck. Prepare yourself. Ha ha ha! Now you know that violence isn't the answer, Prosecutor Blackwell. That annoyingly cheerful laugh. It can be none other than... How's oh, this is still going? Champion of Righteousness, Bobby Fulbright here. In justice we trust. Detective Fulbright. Sorry to keep you waiting, Mr. Lawyer. I hope I'm not too late. I don't believe we had an appointment. I tried to hurry, but I ended up helping a little old lady cross the street. And then I had to break up a cat fight. I tell you, justice sure is a full-time job. Was it a fight between cats, or... You know what? I don't want to know. <clears throat> Why are you here again? Because the defendant isn't the culprit, and I came to make sure that justice is served. Uh... I don't have any idea what you're talking about. Fulbright, I always thought you were a bit touched in the head. But have you finally succumbed? Nope, but it looks like you've succumbed to this phantom of yours. Open your eyes and let the evidence of justice uncloud your judgment. What evidence? Come to think of it, you did say something about finding us some evidence. I see too, I feel a lot better now that I've been able to get that off my chest. Okay. I didn't think he was serious, though. So what is it, Detective? Is it something that will prove Mr. Starbuck innocent? It is indeed! Have a look at this! <clears throat> What's this, lighter? That's right, a lighter thought to have been used by the culprit, no less. The Space Museum's cleaning robot picked it up. It has the victim Clay Terrain's blood along with his killer's fingerprints on it. What? Why? Oh, okay, cool. Gah. Order, order, Detective Fulbright. Can I assume that the fingerprints don't belong to the defendant? You bet. Mr. Starbuck is totally innocent. This is it. This is just what I needed. Cool. Two culprit's fingerprints are on in the victim's blood. Your Honor, this is decisive evidence that supports the defense's earlier claim. Mm, explain yourself, Mr. Wright. With pleasure, Your Honor. Recall where this lighter was found. Based on that, we can extrapolate, extrapolate that after the killer murdered Mr. Terrain, they escaped with lighter in hand into the Space Museum, where they dropped it. The switching of the two launch pads occurred. Then finally the killer left through the boarding lounge 2 and made their escape. Meanwhile, Mr. Starbuck was found in Boarding Lounge 1 after the murder, a fact that Director Cosmos has testified to. Therefore, Mr. Starbuck couldn't have possibly been the one to drop the lighter there. Ah, but the defendant had free reign of the area until Dist Director Cosmos appeared. Could he not have dropped the lighter in the Space Museum during that span of time? No. Oh my god. You'd like that to be true, wouldn't you? But Dr. Cosmos testified that right after he saw the mysterious figure with the lighter, he went into the lounge and found the unconscious Mr. Starbuck. In other words, Mr. Starbuck wouldn't have had time to double back to the museum. No, Prosecutor Blackwell, this lighter could only have been dropped by the real killer. Hmm. Most importantly, Mr. Starbuck's fingerprints were nowhere to be found on this lighter. I think you understand what this means, don't you? This piece of evidence unequivocally proves that Mr. Starbuck wasn't the culprit. Ugh. 
Mm, this doesn't need to appear, appear to be decisive evidence that proves the defense's claim. As for the remote switch that was found in Mr. Starbuck's pocket, we can assume it was planted by the killer on the unconscious Mr. Starbuck. No, there must be some mistake. Frankly, Prosecutor Blackwell, I've been worried about you. <laughs> Sorry. You've been chasing this phantom for seven whole years. I understand your urgency because tomorrow... Silence. Oh, right, the statute of limitations. Fulbright, you promised never to speak of that. Huh? Tomorrow? What about tomorrow? Mm, given the body of evidence, I think it's safe to say the defendant is innocent. In light of the fact that it was impossible for him to have committed the crime. A few unanswered questions remain, so I look forward to seeing what you two uncover. But for now, this court finds the defendant, Solomon Starbuck. Oh, did I, did I actually get it? Victory! Cool! He doesn't seem happy. I'm happy. Wow, alright, uh, well, I guess we won the trial. Never mind. <laughs> <sighs> yes, we did it, Mr. Wright. Looks like we pulled it off somehow, huh? With some help from Detective Fulbright. Mr. Wright, Miss Sykes, thank you. Please thank Apollo for me, too. You all are the best. Oh, I wish I could, we could tell Apollo about Mr. Starbuck's verdict right now. Yeah, me too, but that's going to have to wait. Ooh, now that a verdict has been reached... I'd like to bring today's trial to a close. Uh, court is adjourned. Objection. What? Oh, they actually got me. Oh, he got me good. Mm, I actually... I actually for once thought that we had won. It's too late to object, isn't it? It simply isn't possible. Something's wrong. Uh, Prosecutor Blackwell, are you dissatisfied with the verdict? Fulbright, what were the results of the fingerprint analysis for the lighter? Huh? The results? Ha 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 ha! Ha 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 ha! Uh, well, well... I was in a hurry, you see, and then there was that cat fight, and, uh, well... Did I... Are you kidding me? I kinda got carried away when I heard the prints weren't Mr. Starbucks, so... You have yet to read it. Prosecutor Blackwell, can you read out who the prints belong to? Thorough analysis, the fingerprints were found to belong to Athena Sykes. Oh no. So says the report. What? What? Huh? M me? Order, oh, I say order! Miss Sykes, tell me you have an explanation for this. We just finished proving that this lighter could only belong to the killer. So finding your prints on it can only lead us to one grave conclusion. I, I don't know how they got on there, but I know I'm not the culprit. This can't be happening. We built up our argument piece by piece, and I don't think any of our reasoning was faulty. So how could it have led to this? Ah, oh, crap. Ugh. What have I done? Please forgive me. I'm sorry. Order, order. Detective Philbright's happy you're crying. What in the world is happening here? It's like the world's gone mad. Order, order. I will have order. Confusion spiraled into utter chaos. After all we'd fought for, the truth had turned cruelly on us to accuse Athena of the crimes. Somewhere, somehow, everything had gone terribly wrong. We had stumbled over the edge of reason and into the jaws of a twisted darkness. Oh. Um. And what? A new episode- oh! Oh! I guess that- wow! Holy crap! Ah! Uh, did not see that coming at all!
Ooh. I have, I have nothing. I am genuinely shocked. I, like I said, they got me when I was like, oh yeah, we won. I, I felt really good that like we had actually won. And then I was like, oh, okay, they got me with the psych out. And then they took it a step further. Ooh. All right. Uh, I hope you guys are looking forward to the next chapter as much as I am. As always, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.